Hi everybody and welcome to Garden Style. It is another blustery day here in the state of Washington and it's probably in the 50s. I've had a tough time recording this just due to the fact we have been dodging rain for the last couple of days and we have another storm blowing in tonight. So I figured, okay, I see blue skies, a few clouds, now's my chance. I can get out here and show you guys how to overwinter canna plants as well as begonias and geraniums and just give you a few tips and tricks as to some easy ways you, you can go about saving your plants over the winter time so that you can bring them back out in the spring. Now, we just suffered a massive hailstorm just a couple of days ago, and I came out here and I noticed how shredded my leaves were on these canna plants. Um, so I'm going to be cutting those off, but no worries. I'm about to winterize these plants anyway. And the easiest way for me here in Zone 8 is for me to grow cannas in pots. I've done it before in the ground and I have found that even though I'm in zone 8 you could safely keep your bulbs in the ground for canna plants but I've done that before and we ended up with a real bad freeze during the winter time and it was so wet that they ended up just rotting in the ground so after that experience I just decided okay I'm just gonna grow them in pots I have had the best luck with growing different varieties of cannas in pots even though they are bulbs during the summertime and then all I do is wait for the first frost to just like royally zap the leaves and at that point when I see they've gotten a good zap at that point I go ahead and I cut them down all the way to the ground in the pot and then I just take the entire pot and put it in the garage and I stop watering them. Now that doesn't mean you can let them go dry completely but they definitely do better especially in colder weather if you leave the soil that the bulbs are sitting in just slightly damp that doesn't have to be soaking wet just slightly damp and uh, it's not like they're doing any growing or using any water anyway they basically go dormant during the winter time so I just check on them once or twice a month just make sure it's not completely bone dry and if it's not then I just leave them alone then in the springtime when I see it's at least above 45 degrees and above I will pull them back out I put them on the sunniest most southern wall of the house that gets the most sun and the most most warmth and at that point during the spring, which is usually probably early to mid-March, I'll start pulling them out when I see we're not going to have any more freezing temperatures. And it takes about two to three weeks, but then suddenly you start to see all the new growth starting to poke through for the spring. As soon as they sense that warmth and that sun, and I give them some water and, of course, fertilizer, then they start to spring into action and, of course, get huge <laughs> like they do here. Now I'm going to overwinter these this year, I'm going to wait for them to die back completely, put them in the garage, and next spring you can tune back in and I'm going to show you how to go about dividing cannas that you have in pots because these have been in their pots for a couple of years now and they are more than ready to get divided by next spring. So I'll be a whole other video that I can show you. But meanwhile what I'm going to do, since the hail did such damage to some of the leaves, I'm actually going to cut those off. I just have a pair of scissors and this was a stock that created a bloom anyway so if you have any old bloom stocks that sort of thing on your canna plants you can cut them back now and I just take the opportunity while it's not raining <laughs> today to cut off some of the older stocks so that they stop putting their energy into them and then I'm just going to gradually cut off all the old crummy leaves just like that and I start preparing them for their winter hibernation. But for now, we haven't seen any freezing temperatures just yet. Um, however, for those of you who may live in Zone 7 and below, and you know you can't put them in the ground, now's your chance to get them inside. Um, don't worry about shocking them or anything like that, because they're just, their foliage is just going to naturally drop off anyway. So for those of you who, who live in colder zones, zone seven and below, usually, who can't actually put them in the ground, pots are a great way to go for these and still get that tropical, beautiful look uh, with cannas. So same rule applies for those of you in colder zones. If you have them in pots, you can certainly leave them in the pots. It's not gonna hurt them a bit. Just stop watering them, put them in a secure, dry, semi-warm place in your garage and they will overwinter just fine. Okay, okay, so let's talk a little bit about geraniums. 
Now this guy is looking pretty sad. It's gotten very cold at night, but this is kind of a cool trick as to how I overwinter geraniums. But first let's talk about how different geraniums can be. So geraniums is pretty much a very general term for several different species of geraniums. Okay, so these are pelargoniums, or we call them zonal geraniums. And the best way to tell the difference between a zonal geranium and a seed geranium, number one, is your zonals, if I grab this little torn up leaf here, will actually have a color or a ring of color in the leaves themselves, as you see here. These are the ones I have the best luck overwintering. Um, seed geraniums, not so much. Those I usually just pitch at the end of the year and I just treat them like annuals. But zonal geraniums, you can easily overwinter. And then you have regular perennial geraniums, which actually stay in the ground or are a much hardier variety of geranium. So geranium is pretty much a very general term that's used for this type of plant. But these are actually pelargoniums, which set them aside from your actual perennial geraniums. So hopefully I've cleared that up and not completely confused you. But anyway, if you see that your leaves have little rings in them, I'm hoping you can see this, like a ring of color that runs through the leaves, and these are really beat up because they, they've seen a long summer, then you know you'll be able to overwinter these the way that I'm going to show you. So what I've done with this guy is I've actually pulled him out of the pot and I knocked as much of the soil off the roots as I possibly can. And then what I'm going to do is, of course, cutting off all the buds, all the blooms that you see here. I'm going to snip off any old icky leaves, which are just about all of them. all the stress I have to do that, I'm actually going to whack this plant off. See all this extra new growth? I'm just going to cut it off. scare you. The biggest issue that most people have with pelargoniums or geraniums is moisture, especially during the winter time. They have to stay on the dry side. So I've tried these in pots before, overwintering them in the garage, underneath grow lights. I've done all of that. They still ended up with powdery mildew or some sort of fungus on them. So I gave up on that idea and decided to try this idea instead. So after I have cut off most of the plant, you see what I'm down to now? To where I'm just down to almost the original plant that it started out with. Then what I'm gonna do is place this in a paper bag upside down. like how you would dry out herbs, for instance. I'm going to hang it upside down in the garage and I'm going to walk away and I'm going to leave it. And what the brown bag does is it actually helps to wick the moisture away from the plant. And I can guarantee you that by next spring when I go to pull it out, most of these leaves will probably be gone or have dropped off inside of the bag. But you're going to see a lot of new growth. It'll be spindly, but you'll see a lot of new growth, and it will still be very much alive, believe it or not. They just go dormant. They just go to sleep. And I have found that that is the best way that uh, you can overwinter them. And then once they start to send out all their new growth, which will probably be about the end of February, beginning of March, I pull it out of the bag. I repot it in some moist, lovely composted soil, give it a little fertilizer, and put them in the sun. And I'll usually put them out in the sun in a window inside of the house to begin with to see if their leaves are getting bigger and stronger. Then I'll put them out in the garage for a couple of days. This is called hardening them off. Once they get used to that warm temperatures on the inside of your home, you can put these poor little things into some major shock if you just put them directly outside. So I highly recommend that you harden them off in the garage for a couple of days, let them get used to the cooler temperatures. Then you can put them outside. And I wouldn't put them outside until you know you're well above freezing, like in the 50s, consistently during the day. Um, 40s maybe, 40, 45, it actually got down to 38 degrees the other night. And he's still doing fine. They're actually tougher than they look. 
Um, but I'm not going to take any more chances at this point because I see that freezing temperatures are coming up here in the next couple of weeks. So again, I'm in zone 8 so I can get away with keeping them outside. Those of you in colder zones, if you haven't done it already, then I highly recommend that you pull them out now. Flip them upside down once you've cut everything off. Put them inside of a paper bag and I'll show you an example of that here in just a minute. And then I just hang them in the garage and let them dry. Now the roots are fine. They will get super dry and all I can tell you is miss them from time to time. You don't have to miss the whole plant, just the roots that are exposed outside of the paper bag. And that keeps the fungus and powdery mildew from accruing on all of the leaves that you see here in the stems. And that is their biggest enemy is moisture. So I have found that I've had the best luck um, almost like drying out herbs. <laughs> it's almost the same kind of concept except that you're not letting those roots dry out completely. You just check on them now and then, give them a mist, and then by late February, early March, you'll look inside of the bag and you'll start to see some new little leaves starting to spring up from all the stems. They don't look the greatest, but trust me, give them a couple of weeks after you have pulled them out of the bag and put them in soil, and you'll have a whole new plant again, and you have saved yourself some money by not having to go out and purchase more. So there you go, a few tips on overwintering geraniums or pelargoniums, zonal pelargoniums. All right, moving on to begonias. Okay, so this just happens to be a Rex begonia. And what I'm doing right now is I'm cleaning off some of the icky leaves that you see sitting in here. Again, this thing got hit a little bit by the hailstorm, but not a lot. It was sitting here underneath a uh, covered porch. But once I get done cleaning this up, I am literally going to pick up the whole pot and put it inside. So what I'm going to do first, since it's been outside for a little while, I'm actually going to place it in the garage for a couple of days. I let it acclimate to a little bit warmer temperatures. And then this literally is going to take a home in my living room in one of my indirect windows. So it gets indirect light, not direct light, and it will be a happy camper <laughs> throughout the entire winter. So Rex begonias are awesome that way. Um, and you can usually recognize a Rex begonia just by the fact that it has such deep color to it. Um, they're known for their beautiful, colorful foliage more than they are their flowers. Now there are other types of begonias, especially your tuberous begonias, which actually come from a bulb. And those are treated a little differently. Tuberous begonias basically are meant to be outside. But if you live in a real cold, cold zone like I do, I'd probably say zone 8 and below, you're definitely going to want to bring your tuberous begonias inside. And what I would do with a tuberous begonia is actually take them out of the pot, I shake all the dirt off, and I place them in a cardboard box. The cardboard box, of course, keeps the, the fungus and moisture from affecting the bulbs. You could put sawdust in with them if you want, or paper shavings, um, but I have literally, probably just out of laziness, <laughs> have thrown the bulbs in a cardboard box. I close the lid, and I don't close it up super tight, because uh, you, you do want some air to get in there, but that cardboard box is going to act like a moisture wick, and it's going to keep the moisture from soaking into the bulbs. And they can literally stay dry during the wintertime until early spring. And at that point, you can pull them back out and place them back into a pot and place them back outside. So when they're tuberous bulbs, just think of them like potatoes. Almost the same thing as to how you would store a potato in the cellar or basement or out in your garage. It has to be in a cool, dry place. And the bulbs to these are the same, same way. You just treat them the same way. Except I put them in a cardboard box just to help with the moisture wicking. And then by spring, you can pull them out, put them back into a pot, and place them back outside. How easy is that? And you save yourself a ton of money that way. So make sure you know the differences between your Rex begonias, your tuberous begonias. There are several different varieties. Highly recommend you get online, look up the differences so that you know exactly the type of begonia that you have, and that way you know how to treat them during the winter and how to bring them in. But for this guy, being he's a Rex begonia, I can treat him just like a house plant. In fact, a lot of people grow them as house plants. And uh, then I'll just put him back out in the spring when I see the temperatures are 50 and above. And he's off and running again, <laughs> which is awesome. That way you save yourself a lot of money. 
So this guy will probably put on a little bit of size, but not much during the winter time. They actually slow down and practically go to sleep in the winter. But I may have to divide him in the spring. I'm going to take a look. I actually have three different plants in this particular pot. But how easy is that? I'm just going to pick up the whole pot, bring it into the garage for a couple of days, and then he'll come inside. And he can share the warmth inside the house with the rest of us in a nice window. All right, you guys. So there you go. Here is a visual as to what to do with your geraniums. So here I've knocked off most of the dirt, and I could probably get some more off of there, but it'll dry out once I get it in the garage. But you just place it in a paper bag like this. If you want, you can put a rubber band around it. I actually stab a couple holes in here, and um, I actually call it what it is. This just happens to be a red geranium, so I'll just put on there red geranium. And I'll stir it in the garage just like this. <laughs> and then you can go around and you can miss this throughout the winter time. And that way the bottom stays dry, but the roots still are getting a little moisture. And all it's going to do is just go to sleep. And I can't wait to show you what I do with these in the spring. All right, you guys. So I hope that's informed you a little bit. And uh, I actually am going to have a special announcement to make here pretty soon. So stay tuned. All right, everybody. So there's a few tips and tricks on how you can overwinter your cannas, your begonias, and your zonal geraniums. Now, in my next upcoming video, I'm going to be covering how to overwinter your garden bed as well as your veggie beds. How to get the soil ready, how to mulch, and just basically lay everybody down to sleep for the winter time. I am hoping here in a couple of weeks that I have a special announcement to make. I have been working on a big project, like huge project, uh, this last eight weeks. And I'm hoping to make this announcement here in a couple of weeks. So whatever you do, stay tuned because I, I am so excited, so excited to introduce you to this new project that I've been working on. All right, you guys, any questions, of course, you can get a hold of me at GardenStyleNW.com or you can email me at gardenstyleinwest at gmail.com. And of course, in the description box down below, there are tons of room for any comments that you would like to make. I would like to thank all the new subscribers who have signed up. This channel is still growing, keeps growing. And uh, of course, I hope I can keep you guys inspired throughout the winter season and just remind you that we're not done in the garden. There are so many things we can do, even in the winter time. Uh, that has to do with gardening, um, even if we have to take it inside, whether that be terrariums, wreaths that we can make during the Christmas, and of course, decorating our porches and getting our homes ready for Christmas, which, whew, whole new set of videos for that. So, very excited. Hopefully I can make this announcement here real soon. Meanwhile, stay tuned, keep your hands dirty, and we'll talk soon. Bye for now.